What's this? Church, RDG, summer camp. This is living. This is best friends. This is show me your friends. I'll show you your future. This is the jump, tribal wars, dance parties, prayer, peace, worship. This is having your people, your tribe, your crew. This is going after Jesus, unashamedly, wholeheartedly, with everything. For he is alive in us, and we are never alone. We are young and free. anyone think less of you because you are young but be an example to all this is revival this is real authentic youth song for you just released today Tyler today indescribable come on if you know it let's sing what a vibe you're indescribable in every way you search me out and now I'm caught up in your grace I heard my name across the ocean you pull me closer, the current changed. You show me life, a new horizon, a silver lining, a brand new day. And I'm like, oh, I can't find the words to say. of heaven is life with you now there's no fighting this gracious rhythm i lift my hands high in praise to you now every time i go i can't find the words to say Thank you. 
Today was the day we dropped that song on Young and Free, so, so make sure you check that out. I'll tell you who's indescribable. Who? You are. Wow. wow. I mean, you can't describe me, but I'm indescribable. <laughs> hey, I've actually got a bone to pick with Young and Free for a okay. second here. Yeah. Because indescribable, not ha oh, by the way, welcome to Hillsong yeah, Youth welcome, welcome, welcome. online. So great yeah. to have you yeah. joining us, yeah, particularly welcome. if you're new or visiting. Subscribe, all right? We've got something cool for you <laughs> later on. Um, Listen, what we wanted to ask, what I wanted to ask, right? I, how do you spell indescribable? I-N-D-E-S-C-R-I-B-A-B-L-E. Just type it in the chat for a second. Have you ever had to type indescribable? I-N-D-E-S-C-R-I-B-A-B-L-E. -E. Yeah, I did, I did not know that's how you spell indescribable. It's like, it's got the power of, Tower of Babel in it. <laughs> indescribable. <laughs> Yeah, right. But is that how you spell it? Indescribable? I, I think so. Uh, I don't have a dictionary handy, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure um, Laura's got it right. I'm going to go with her. Oh, thank spelling. you. Melody. I thought she's Young so, and Free was just like... Loyal. Oh, you are loyal. She's very loyal. <laughs> but I thought Young and Free was just inventing a new word, so... What? Let's go with it. But apparently that's how you spell it, so... Anyways... There you go. Can we get Melody to sing it in Spanish for our Spanish audience <laughs> right now? She knows how to sing it in Spanish. Right, okay. Who I wants to hear it in Whoa. Espanol? Who wants to hear it in Espanol? Go for it, Melody. Okay, show I us, show us what you got. Bit, and I'm so sorry if the pronunciation's weird. Indescriptible, it's tu amor. La 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 la. I'm a salsa up here. Indescriptible. <laughs> okay, how do you say indescribably? Indescriptible. <laughs> Indescribable. Libre. Perfect. <laughs> Come on, South America. Indescribable. <laughs> Acid. Anyways, listen. Tonight's oh, going to be a night. It's going to be a good night. I'm so excited. We have, uh, we have Youth Chef tonight. Oh yes. We have Hero of the Week. We've got a brand new segment. I'm very excited about this one. It's called this. From the chat to the. Plats. This is where we love making heroes of our students. Always. But we're going to hear for just a moment from some of our students who are going to preach the house down. Yes. You know, if you, we were having youth the normally. taking platform. Yeah. If we were having youth normally, we call these nights, you know, like a student takeover or uprising. It's basically our student leadership team stepping up to the platform from the chat, in the chat, to the plat, short for platform. <laughs> I, I know, I felt like I had to explain that because I even was like, what does that even mean? I like it, I like it. But tonight we've got one of our students, they're going to be dropping it it's like be it's good. hot tonight. So make we sure you We even stay have the one and only Bob Goff who's going to be joining us wow. exclusively for Hillsong Youth Flash now, Young Adults. For those who don't know who Bob Goff is, Bob Goff is the happiest person that you will ever meet yeah. in the world. Yeah. He is one of the most joyous. 60 plus year old you'll ever meet in your life. He's a New York Times best-selling author. Yeah. He's a pilot. He was a lawyer for 20, 30 years. And this week we heard from Bob Goff on The Neighborhood, if you're a young adult, during the week, every fortnight, Wednesday, seven o'clock, we have The Neighborhood and it's really cool. You should tune in. But anyways, we'll be hearing from Bob Goff. Can you tell that I need to go to the bathroom really bad? Yeah, you're like, you got the shakes and I'm not sure what's going on. You're indescribable, seriously. Oh, thank you. Uh, That's the nicest thing you've said to me in the last 10 minutes. Wow, thank you. Uh, so, tonight we've also got, all the way from LA, Sam Lopez, oh. who's going to be bringing the word incredible it's communicator. Like a, it's like a Spanish kind of theme oh, tonight. Oh, we should have had a Spanish <laughs> night. 
We should do oh, that. Oh man! What Let us thinking? know in the chat. Should we do an, an Espanol night? Yeah. What kind of night do you want to have? What kind yeah. of? Yeah. Yeah. What kind Let of us night? Know. Maybe we'll have like a bit of a multicultural island night. Anyways, hey. That could be really fun. In a moment, we're gonna go to Youth Chef, okay? And look, this has stirred some, some um, you emotion, know, emotion Drama. for so many people. I mean, first yeah. Bon Bon. Justice for Bon Bon. Yeah. We heard Bon Bon last week. And then the what, do you know party. what happened last week? No, what happened? Is that we, we had Bon Bon in the studio and then we finally gave her her moment to speak and the, we had a technical difficulty. Oh, someone's, there's a mole in here. <laughs> Someone's in on this. I know, it. something's going on. But Bon Bon, I want to let you know that I love you. And and if I had anything to do with it, you would still be running on Bentley. Youth Chef. Yes, but hey, shout outs. Let us know where you're from. We're going to give you a shout out in a moment. But for now, check out what happened this week on Youth Chef episode three. <laughs> There were three. And then there were three. Wow, guys, welcome to the third cook, the semi-final. We've seen so many different um, types of dishes this competition, and honestly, it's been really exciting, but you guys are so close to victory. Um, you know, there's the title, the, there's the prize money um, up for grabs, but there's also the title of the first ever Hillsong Youth Chef winner. And only one of you is gonna walk away with that title. And um, you're so close to so close to it right now. And there's just one cook that stands between you and that finale. So Renee, what are we cooking? Here it is. Today you guys are making the humble sandwich. You can make it sweet or savory, honestly, whatever you like, but you need to impress us. So, may the best chef win. Dan, what are you looking for in a sandwich? What do you look for? Well, as we've seen in the other cooks, Justin, uh, I believe that risk is what's gotten these guys over the line. It's gotten over the edge. I'm not looking just for the typical humble sandwich. I'm looking for that little bit of extra zing, looking for that bit of risk. Um, and I'm excited to see what you guys can do. Yeah, I'm looking for texture, looking for balance, a harmony of flavors, like these things have to eat well together. So it's gonna be a really exciting cook. Today I put my childhood on a plate and made peanut butter and Nutella sandwich. When I was little, whenever I was hungry, it was the only thing I could make because I couldn't cook. So. Every time I got home from school and I was hungry, I'd make that myself. Joel. Yes. What are we, what's going on? You've had some big, well, big dishes. Already I'm seeing big changes to the others. Yeah, well, I was really hoping for a knife. Yeah, well, I was really hoping for a knife. Um, which is what it is, but um, I'm gonna make something interesting, guys. You don't have a knife? No, I don't. I would love a knife. Though. You should have a knife because I don't want you to spread the spread on with your fingers. No, well, I, I won't use this piece. It's all fine. It's all good, guys. Don't, okay. don't use stress. It's no, fine. we're not stressed. Um, as long as don't, you're don't not be stressed. stressed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, what, do you, what, what do we got going on here? I'm Tell thinking me. half sweet, half um, half savory. Sweet and sour. A sweet, sweet and sour, sour sandwich. No, sweet, sweet and, and savory. savory. That's what I said. Sweet and sour something That's what else. I said. I'm thinking half sweet, half um, half savory. Sweet and sour. A sweet and sour, sour. sandwich. No, sweet, sweet and, and savory. savory. That's what I said. Sweet and sour something I else. I don't know how that's going to go together. Honestly, I don't. I don't see it. I've never had a combination that's worked for me. So I mean, there's a first for everything. Are you going to go meat and spreads, or are you just going to stick are you to go one or the other? Spread and cheese. What, what are your thoughts? What are you going to do? I think I'm maybe going to do a mix of everything. Well, maybe. keep cooking. You don't have long. You guys have one minute left. Oh, 
Joe, yeah. sorry, what's happening <laughs> no, no, over no, here? No. Addy, pop the toes. I don't know. You gotta I don't know how to work this thing out. Joe, you've That's literally got 40 it's seconds. Burning. How do I do it? Joe, you need to get that out. You need to get that Wait. out. You gotta, Joel, unplug it. Oh, oh. Joel, that's bad. <laughs> Are you gonna serve that? What are you gonna do? You need to think about a plan B right now. No, I don't. Oh man, when I saw the smoke coming out of the toaster, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know what to think. At first, I, I, my instant thought was find the cancel button. Cause I, I didn't think it would burn. This wasn't what I planned and I, I thought it was over. You need Joel, to, you've got Joel, 30 trust seconds. Me, you, you need to fix that up. Joel had lost the pot. There's no room for this. I'm um, in this kitchen. You know, it's, si it's such high caliber. That guy, Josh Ma, he burnt my toast. He set the setting all the way up to six. The judges didn't see it. When I was getting that knife, I was asking for a knife. Josh instantly came up, put it up to six, man. Six. That's why my toast burnt. It's all Josh's fault. It's toast. How do you not know how to toast bread? <laughs> <laughs> Leave uh, me alone. First dish we'd like to try. Josh. Let's see it, Josh. Wow. Josh. Wow. 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 Explain the dish. So I, I took your advice in a bit of consideration and then I thought of my grandfather's travels. You see, he went, he was one of the, um, he, he traveled a lot. He was, a, he was a photojournalist and one of the things he, he, one of the places he went to was Italy. Um, and he talked about how that made basically dumplings, but it was out of, they had cheese in the middle instead of meat. And I thought I'd incorporate this into my Italian style club sandwich. Um, I thought that was an amazing sandwich. I thought you did a great job with the cheese and the salami, really complemented each other well. Could have used a bit more butter though. The texture was a little bit dry, um, but I feel like you've done a great job on this. Yeah, for me, I thought there was a great balance. You have that salty salami, but then you have that creamy cheese that really cuts through, brings everything together. How'd you feel? I have to agree with Samuel over here. It just wasn't my vibe, a bit too dry for me, and the presentation wasn't at its best. A little disappointed this time, Josh. Take Thank dish you. Back. It was maybe one of my best cooks I've had yet. Um, and I think the, the standard has stepped up, but so has my game. So I'll bring your dish up. <sighs> What have you cooked for us? Well. Wow. Well. Wow. So uh, let me explain it. Um, you see, we got the cross equals love. So um, cross equals love, and we got the blood here because Jesus poured out his blood for us. And burnt toast, no one wants burnt toast. Like, no one wants sin. Right. You know, so he, he, sin on the cross equals, uh, yeah, he softens your heart. So that's why it's soft bread uh, with meat. And it's just, it's good stuff, you know. Um, Joel. I love the story behind the dish. I really do. I just feel like it's not you. It's something we saw from Josh in the previous round and I feel like um, I just didn't, I was hearing you but I didn't feel you. Do you know what I mean? I could no. hear the words coming out of your mouth. That's about it. Honestly, the burnt, just the burnt ashy flavor just overpowered the whole dish for me. I didn't, I didn't love it. Yeah. Honestly, Joel, your presentation every single time is outstanding. There's always a story, there's always a beautiful display, but the flavors just did not complement each other this time. I think next time will be better. It's, no matter what you say in the dish, I know that you tried to make a combination and make it cross equals loves, but the toast was burnt, you know? And that is one of the biggest, I would have just removed the toast completely from the dish. Yeah, my puppy can cook toast better than that. And he doesn't have one. I would. Have Joel, I would actually disagree. I actually love the presentation. I love the little uh, black spots all over the dish. It looked beautiful. The burnt toast actually gives it that new edge, that new flavor. I love that coal flavor. That was great. Thank you, Joel. I tried to redeem myself by making it, you know, that cross about sin and stuff, but Renee wasn't having it. All right, <laughs> last dish. Bella. Um, Bella. Now I'm excited for this one. I like it. I like how you've got some height to it. Um, really cool. What have you cooked? I have created my childhood on a plate. It is soft bread with smooth sweet Nutella and crunchy salty peanut butter. 
Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Yeah, <laughs> straight off the bat, straight away, I feel like it was extremely sweet. Um, maybe personally I would have utilised classical uh, peanut butter and jelly. That was in your arsenal there, that was in the ingredients, but that's, that's beautiful either way. Bella, that hit the spot for me. Honestly, I would have to disagree with Dan. The crunchy peanut butter, the Nutella. I was actually surprised you didn't toast the bread. I would usually toast it, but this, the soft bread, brought me back to my kindergarten days. Well done. Bella, honestly, eating it, I was legit getting a little bit emotional because it took me back to my childhood too. I felt like I was a little kid again, and it's a classic for a reason. Peanut butter, chocolate, soft bread, the texture actually really works well together. And um, I'm having that last piece. Thank you so much. That was, that was a joy to eat. I feel confident in myself. I think I did well. I put my heart into it. And I think I'm growing as a cook. There's an obvious loser. There. there is an obvious loser. I'm really disappointed. He really let us down this round. Because I, I didn't see it coming. Well, let's go. Guys, this was a really close round. Obviously, you had a lot more ingredients to be way more creative. But unfortunately, somebody has let us down this round. Joel, your time is over. <laughs> Honestly, uh, Joel, are you okay? No. Oh. <laughs> Joel, it was, you, you've cooked incredible throughout the whole competition. You've given us a show. You've added so much to to the competition it's just there were just some undeniable flaws in there that we couldn't get past we ate your dish but we didn't eat your heart in that last one it doesn't even make sense and neither did your dish thank okay. you joel we'll see you next time see you joel in another life you kidding me um i've learned that uh you ain't gotta be watching you know I, I should have cancelled it. I should have cancelled the toast when I saw it smoking at first. And ah, uh, I don't know. That's, I just gotta be more careful around my workbench. Makes me feel terrible. I hope he loses. Gets destroyed, even. But I, I still love him. Nah, no, Bella should win 100%. So much better than Josh. Josh is sneaky. He does not deserve to win at all. Everything he's saying to those judges to make them feel emotionally, all lies. All lies. He's lying to me. This is what you walk away with tonight. The winner will walk away with the prize money and not just the title of the first ever Hillsong Youth Chef, but also the opportunity. That is actually shocking. Joel. One of the nicest sad. human beings. I feel really sad. He made one mistake and there was no grace. Nothing. What would Jesus do? I don't know. I just, definitely wouldn't have that dish. I, it hurts. I, I feel hurt for Joel. Man. He was so affected emotionally as yeah. well. And yeah. I'm an Enneagram 4, so I'm feeling... Oh, like oh, my, what? My, <laughs> my compassion right now is just... Wow. Yeah. That be honest though, be honest. How many of you have gone to the kitchen and you're making a Nutella and peanut butter sandwich right now? Wow. I know you guys, you're doing Don't that. Don't disconnect from us to go have no Nutella. <laughs> Nutella was a luxury in my household when I was a kid. Oh yeah. And my childhood on a plate was was next to nothing. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Laura's getting teary over here. That was an incredible episode. I gotta say, fingernail bite and stuff. Those hosts, I mean, they should be. Ah, oh, they're brutal. They were brutal. All three of them. They were brutal. Brutal but people. Listen. Hard-hearted people. Stay tuned. Let's see what happens next week on the Youth Chef. Do I love? I love that Alea. She she puts herself in the chat every single week, and every single week she just so happens to be first on the list for our shout outs. Oh yeah, Isaac. Something iffy is happening here, and I yeah. think it has something to do with her boyfriend. Who's who on is one of the great worship leaders of our youth ministry, he's in control. Isaac Fisher, he's who making... also happens to be in the control yeah, panel. Yeah, he's in the control room, the control out. tower. Yeah, not in the it's control right panel. That's weird. Anyway, but, but we, anyways, do like, we, we love Alea, by the way. We, we love, love Alea. Yes. Alea, come back. Um, <laughs> listen, shout outs. We love doing this. 
We boys. love doing this every week because every we week. want to know where people are joining yes. from. Where are you watching from? Yes. Light up the chat. Tell we want to know. So, first of all, a big, big, big happy birthday, everyone's saying, to Lexi Douglas. Woo! Lexi Douglas. Lexi, where are you at? She's the behind the seat. Come up here for a second. Yes, Stay socially yes. distanced. Of course. This so is Lexi Douglas, everyone. The better Douglas. There's, Tyler Douglas is Do you know wife. what? There's always, always a debate about who the best Douglas is. And I just want to say there's some pretty great Douglas girls. It's, yes, yes. yes. Lauren, 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 she's really, great. Best friend, went for a three yeah. hour walk with her today. Yeah. Nicola in Melbourne, Victoria. Nicola, Melbourne Cares Nicola, Buster. very smart. She's good. She's very smart. But very you, boss, but you, you take I have to say, guys, but Youth Online would not happen without this girl. She makes it happen. She All right. is a you boss. Are hitting me in the face. <laughs> Give it up for Lexi. Happy birthday to Lexi. We love you. We love you, and Lexi. And happy birthday. If you've got a friend that you know of that might be in the chat right now, let us know it's their birthday. We'll give them a shout out. But again, Ryan Turner from the Hills Campus. Good to see you, brother. Maddie from Connecticut. 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 Harry from the Gold Coast. Hey, Harry! <laughs> Harry! I love that. If you've. I'm if talking you know, happy, they probably haven't seen If you know, before. you know. If you know, you know. Yeah. Uh, Laura, who else do we, we have? We have Jordan there? from Sydney. Yes. Uh, Joel New from the Hills Campus. Wow, what a surprise, what Joel. What a surprise there. Gio. Gio. Gio from Bali. Oh, I miss Bali. One of my favourite ads growing up was G, G, O, G, O. Anyways, uh, Ashley from Nigeria. Hello. Hello, Ashley. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Hi. Julia from Poland? We got mm. people watching from Poland? Oh my <laughs> goodness, that's amazing. It's incredible well, stuff. It's so good. Okay, this is what we're about to do. We love making heroes of young people. Yes, we and do. this week is yeah. Hero of the Week. We're going to do a live cross all the way down to the south oh my of gosh. Australia. Are you serious? I didn't know this. Tasmania. All the way down there. In Hobart. So they're the closest to the Antarctica. And I can see Mark and the crew down there, our youth pastors, youth leaders. Mark, over to you. What's happening, bro? Hey. Oh, Tom, it's so good to be on Youth Online tonight. And as you said, we're here in Hobart. Um, we're about to celebrate one of our grade seven fuel girls, the hero of the week. So come on, let's go and knock on the door. Nice. Ooh, big red door. Love it. That door has like very, it's like Tazzy vibes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, is anyone home? Oh. She's probably making toast yeah, yeah, right no, now. Yeah, no, she's probably putting on her robe or something, you know? Okay. What? <laughs> Shiloh, oh, you are the hero of the week. Say hi to Youth Online, you are live. Guys, this is Shiloh. She's an absolute champion here in Hobart. Every single week, she turns up to her RDG with Bible verses and thoughts on the week's theme. Uh, she's got a group chat with some girls at school and every single week she's sending them the link to Youth Online. So because of that, Shiloh, you are this week's Hero of the Week. So well done. And we know Shiloh is actually uh, loves Youth Online so much that we're gonna test your knowledge out from last week's Youth Online. You ready? Last week, what did Justin and Alex eat in Believe in Yourself? A century egg. A century egg, one out of one. <laughs> right, number two. Last week, Chelsea was praying for different groups of people and asking them to put coloured hearts in the group chat. Which group of people was the green heart? Creative. Creative. Two out of two. All right, last question, Shiloh. This one's a big one. If you get this right, the prize is coming your way. Do you want to see our youth pastor, Peter Toggs, dye his hair? Or, yes, I didn't even need to finish the question, Toggs. It was a yes. Dye the hair blonde. Three out of three. Hero of the week, Toggs. And Laura, back over to you. Wow, Amazing. thanks, guys. I, that, Shiloh. I mean, I'm so impressed. That like she could just retain the detail of last week like that it was just very impressive. We I love it. Hey, Shiloh, we love you. You're you hero so cool. of the week. You guys, all, all you guys down there, you're yeah. so cool. Here's a virtual hug from us, Shiloh. You're amazing. And uh, stay tuned for everyone watching in. You never know, we could be door knocking on your you house. You never know. So yeah. next week, it could be you. We love making heroes of 
young people. All right, speaking of students, speaking yeah. of heroes, we're going to give I'm the so people excited. what they actually want, yeah. all right? Yeah. This is not backed by popular demand. This has been popular demand. <laughs> to hear some of our own young people have a go, if you like, yeah. from the chat to the platform. Yes. We got some of our own students these next few weeks who are going to be bringing a short word and basically preaching the house down. This week, we have... Who do we have this week? We have Tane. 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 We have Jury. Tane Jury. Little Jury, who is just always, every single time that kid gets the mic, I mean... He preaches the house down. He you know, one time... Burn the house down. You know, one time I was at summer camp and I was about to get up and preach yeah. at summer camp. This is in fuel and Tane. I feel this tap on the back of my shoulder and I turn around this little Tane and he's like, looks me in the eye and he's like, you know what? People are going to get saved tonight. You're going to preach the word of God tonight. Right. And I tell you what, well Tane, changer. I'll never forget that but night. He's got a very cool mum and dad. Very cool. cool Camps Fosters over at Greater Western Sydney. Yep. We love Greater Western Sydney. How was your Zoom party tonight before youth? Was it amazing? <laughs> Don't worry about Penrith Panthers. Eels are going to take them later on this week. No, we're not. Anyway, forget about the deep down. Back to Tane Jury. He's bringing the word light up the chat. Let's, Let's go, welcome Tane. our first student. Tane, jury, Woo! from the chat to the play. Hi, I'm Tane from GWS here in Sydney. And today the title of my thought is The Days Gone By. The title is taken from the song Days Gone By by Hillsong Young and Free. I was listening to this the other day and some of the lyrics really stood out to me. The lyrics go like this. I see you in the days gone by, your promise never left my side. I know sometimes I tried to give up, still you call me when I fell from high. I thought this was so relevant to us in today and what's happening in the world with coronavirus and how interesting this year's been. It reminded me that God's promises have never left our side and never will. It also reminds me that when we go through the hard times and the road gets bumpy, God will be there for us always. One of my favourite promises that God makes in the Bible is found in Joshua 1 verse 9. And in Joshua 1 verse 9 it says, Be strong and courageous, do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. When God says this to Joshua, Moses, who was the leader at the time, had just passed away. And Joshua was quite frightened and scared of what was in the future for him. But God was reminding him that he is there with him always and always will be there with him. I'm sure that you, just like me and just like Joshua, have been scared or frightened at some times. As a kid, I was scared of the dark and there would be moments where I just couldn't go to sleep. So I would go to the people who I knew were going to be there for me when I needed them, my parents. Every single time, without fail. As soon as I went close to them or I was in near their room, I felt immediately free of that fear. In the same way, just as my parents were there for me, God is there for us. Every time without fail. And I want to remind everyone tonight that no matter how dark it may seem, no matter if you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how bumpy the road is, our God will be there with us always. God has a plan and a purpose for everyone and His promises are always with us. God will be there with you and you'll be able to smile back and look at the days gone by. Oh man, oh well done. Come on, give it up Good for Tane. That was outstanding. So beautiful. He was beautiful delivery, yeah. anointed delivery, great content, deep in the word. I tell Beautiful you what, spirit. this guy is handsome, the next Bishop T.D. Jakes. Handsome young guy. Yeah. I mean, he has it all. Hey, Tane, have you grown up since COVID? <laughs> I, I reckon. mean, bro, the last time I saw you, I swear you were like nine years old, oh. and now you're like 18, bro. So, this guy. my goodness. Don't Sorry. Tane, that was brilliant. We're Incredible. proud of you. Well done. Give it up for Tane one more time. Preaching fire. You never know, next week it could be you. Young adults, it could be you. Yeah. Students, you it better could start be preparing. You. I would even love to hear from some of our own youth leaders. Ooh. Some of our youth leaders, they know how to preach. <laughs> so we're going to be hearing from the chat to the plat. I like that. The chat to the plat. I, that's got a kind of ring to it. It rhymes at least. It rhymes. So, anyways, hey, this is what we're going to do right now. Stay tuned, all right? In a moment, we're going to worship. But this is what we want to do. Uh, this week on the neighborhood, if you don't know what the neighborhood is, Young adults, we gather fortnightly Wednesday uh, around this big idea of the neighborhood and we chat about different areas of life. And, you know, a few weeks ago we had Christine Kane and we had some big names, some CEOs it's of very, some big companies very, come and talk. Very impressive this lineup. week we had Bob Goff. Oh, and man, favorite. I watched it this week and I was, 
I was blown away and I was challenged. It's on YouTube, the extended cut, the neighborhood is on YouTube. So young people, you can go watch this for yourself, but Check young adults, if you want to go and see this, it's absolutely amazing. Talking about peace in these times. Yeah. And so we thought we'd give you just a little snippet, a little preview of what happened on Wednesday night. Just a short clip um, of what uh, Bob Goff said. <laughs> this guy is next level. He's the best. New so York wise. bestseller. He's preached at many conferences. You're gonna love this. Tune in for Bob Goff, and then we're gonna worship together. All right, well, Bob, it's an incredible privilege uh, to be sitting down, having a conversation with you today. Thanks so much for sitting down and having a chat. Great to be able to be with you and all the folks that are listening in. I'm just so glad. You know, the crazy part is you're the hope of this world. And I'm putting all my chips on you guys. All of us that are in my generation are putting all of our chips on all of you. Wow, and that, that's honestly such an honor, Bob. And I think it means a lot to so many people watching that otherwise, you know, are, are doubting their place in this season because so much uncertainty is in the air and they really want to believe in their dreams. And I know he's recently wrote a book called Dream Big, which is incredible. I read it recently and it's been an incredible encouragement to me. But I just want to ask you today, like for someone that has maybe their ambition deferred in this season, that maybe they felt like it didn't really end up the way they thought and there's a bit of uncertainty in the air. How would you encourage someone to dream big in this season despite the uncertainty? Yeah, one of the underlying premises in this arc of the book, it's mm. to do three things. To know what you want, to ask, why do I want it? And then decide, what am I going to do about it? And this isn't a self-help thing. This is Jesus mm. walking up to the blind guy and saying, what do you want? So mm. I'm asking each one of you that are listening, just say it. This is what I want. In high school, you know what I wanted? A date. <laughs> 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 never quite happened. You know what I wanted in college? A date. It never <laughs> happened. I got into law school before I found uh, the girl that would be my wife. And, and one of the things I had to ask is, why do I want that? And the truth of it was I was really lonely. And so sometimes in where I'm assuming faith might be a, a big thing for many of you watching. And for some of you, you're in uh, adjacent to a faith community, but you're not sure that you're really buying it. So I would ask the question, why are you lonely? Where is that coming from? And, and so I didn't follow Jesus because I wanted to fix my loneliness. I followed him because I wanted to fix my heart. Wow. And so there's something that happens when we ask, what do you want? And why do you want it? And then decide, what are you going to do about it? That's where all the powerful stuff is. That's why we've got our chips on you guys, because you make moves. And that's what a movement is. It's just a bunch of you making moves. And I want you to make just courageous moves. Mm. I hope you'll just have this idea and say, like, faith is like a big deal for me. And to say, okay, I know what I want. I know why I want it, because I think it's true. But bring Jesus all of your questions, too. Say, like, I don't know, because Jesus never had problems with people who were confused. Uh, he had problems with people who were faking it. And so know that you can bring those things and then just decide what I'm going to do is find a community of people like the one you have right here online and just say, this is going to be a safe place. Wow. Thank you so much, Bob. And I think we have so much to be challenged and inspired by through this conversation today. So thank you so much for your time. We so greatly appreciate it. Oh, are you kidding me? I'm proud of you guys. I love you. 20 seconds of insane courage. All right, you guys, go. Well, man, thank you, Bob Goff. That's pretty amazing to have you uh, share with us at Hillsong Youth tonight. It's pretty cool feeling courage with our authentic faith. And um, Hillsong Youth, we're going to continue to press into the presence of God right now. I love what it says in Jeremiah 29, that if you draw near to God, if you seek Him and search with all your heart, that you'll find Him. And so we're going to do that. So if you want to stand up, whether you might be at McDonald's with your RDG, whether you're just on your couch at home or in your bedroom, come on, we're going to pursue the presence of God right now and He's going to meet us where we're at. So come on. We sing together, I worship your majesty. I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name. Oh, Jesus, my everything, and all that I am is Sing it again. I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name. Jesus, my everything, and all that I am is yours. So full 
of faith. Come, Holy Spirit. And come, Holy Spirit, rain down on me. Break open the heavens and trench the unseen. We sing for all your presence and pour out your presence as I pour out your praise. Oh, come, Holy Spirit. Oh, Lord, have your come and worship. I worship your majesty. I worship your holy name. Oh, Jesus, my Sing, Lord, send revival. Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven, break out. Come now in power. Cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Well, Lord, send revival. Lord, send it now. A move of your spirit. Heaven, break Come now in power, cover this land like you've done it before. Would you do it again? Thoughts and revival, thoughts and it now. The move of your spirit, heaven break out. Come now. this moment where we get to worship. Man, I feel like I'm losing my voice. <coughs> oh no, uh, I shouldn't have said that out loud. But I do love this moment where we get to worship together and yeah. through all our different devices, but we also get to pray for people, yeah. Lewis, which is really special. Yeah. And people have sent in prayer requests. In fact, every week, people are always sending in prayer requests. There are young people right now that are always in challenges and circumstances. I mean, we're in a global pandemic. Totally. Quite honestly, I don't know if you're like me, I'm kind of over it as well. And I think we've got to keep praying, keep believing that God's going to bring breakthrough. But Lawsie, yeah. who do we have there? Who are we praying for today? Um, someone's uh, praying for health, um, for health in Australia and around the world, and especially in Melbourne. Uh, someone's praying for their grandma, uh, their, uh, their grandma. <laughs> someone's uh, praying for Lebanon. Uh, oh yeah, Yes. Yeah, everything that uh, took place in Beirut. Stop. Okay, and someone is stop. Someone's praying for their school exams. Actually, I, I want to take this very seriously, and I want to pray for what's going on um, in Beirut. It's such a, such a devastating situation, and uh, all the circumstances that are happening in our world right now are so unique. 
Um, and my heart goes out for everybody who is just doing it tough right now. And so, come on, let's um, let's um, extend our faith. Uh, extend our faith. Um, why don't you reach your hands out and, and add your faith as we pray. So Lord Jesus, we thank you that we can look to you. You are so good. You are so good to us and you are so faithful. And as we, um, as we worship you and as we lift your name high, Lord, we pray that you would come, Lord Jesus, that your kingdom would yeah. come here on earth, Lord Jesus, where we so desperately need you to come through. Lord, I thank you, God, that this year is no surprise to you, Lord Jesus. And God, I thank you that we can stand on your word, we can stand on your promises, that we can put our faith and our trust in you and you alone, God. You are our strength, yes, you are our hope, you are our safe refuge, and we love you, God. We worship Amen. you, we love you, Lord Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Hey, Amen. keep sending those prayer requests in and yeah. forgive us, we had a chuckle because the teleprompter yeah. Uh, there was a different message coming it up. It threw us. It threw us. And yeah. we're like, what are we reading? So yeah. forgive us. But we are actually praying for Lebanon and totally. everything that happened there last week. Yeah. And uh, in all seriousness, we need to keep praying because I know lives, many lives are being impacted. Yeah. But I also know right now here in Australia, this global pandemic, it's, you know, there seems to be a second wave coming through, but I know it's affecting all of Australia, but uh, none more so than Victoria yeah. and Melbourne and our Melbourne family down there. These guys have been in lockdown now for, gee, I don't know how many weeks. You guys went into six weeks lockdown then mm -hmm. felt like a few weeks in, they kind of said, all right, we're going into six weeks lockdown again. And it's like, you guys have been stuck inside. Yeah. So our hearts are really with Victoria and Melbourne yeah. and particularly our youth family down there. We're thinking of you guys, we love you guys. In fact, on the Zoom right now, we've got our Melbourne youth pastors Jesse and Chanel Murray. We just thought we'd say hello to them and even give them a moment just to encourage specifically Victoria, Melbourne, a bunch of your students and young adults right now. But give us a little bit of an update before you encourage us. How are you doing, guys? Yeah. Yes. Hello. We're doing good. It's great to see you guys. You guys are looking so good. I miss you guys. Six weeks in and we have another four to go. So it'll be 10 or No, one. I think we're seven weeks in. Seven weeks in. We started the first week of July. So yeah, it's been a while. We forget. What day is it? Oh, it's Friday. <laughs> Great use. But yeah. look, I honestly couldn't think of anyone better I'd want to be locked up with. So. Oh. Locked in? You win. <laughs> what, um, tell, tell us what's been like the most like challenging thing about being in lockdown and in isolation. Um, I think just not having the option to really do things that you want to do. Like we can't even um, go out to like play tennis, um, you know, Aiden King, pray for us. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, just not having the option, not having the option to see people. We really miss people, miss our family and yeah. friends and youth and yeah. Yeah, I think the isolation for sure. And it just shows you how much we need community. So right. I would encourage anyone watching on, like do whatever you can to you know be pro prioritizing community because it's so important wherever you can find it in youth in zoom it's worth it yeah yeah totally well jesse why don't you take a moment or chanel whoever take a moment just to really really encourage you know the crew down there in yeah. victoria and melbourne and i guess if this applies to you anywhere take on board what these guys are going to speak into your life for this season yeah, definitely. Um, well, I just wanted to take a minute just to speak uh, directly into our students, in particular our U12 students, because I just know um, how tough it is for you guys at the moment. And you're probably facing a lot of disappointment, uh, uh, you know, maybe a lot of um, anxiety or stress. Um, but hey, we speak about all the time you guys being history makers. And this year is absolutely no different. In fact, we will speak about the year 12 of this year in the years to come. You guys are truly once in a generation. Um, you are uh, experiencing this. Um, and so I just wanted to speak into you. It's really easy to get worked up and worried about the future, to maybe focus on the things that you've missed. But I just want to encourage you to stay in the present, that God can do something in your heart, in your life, in a moment. So stay present. You know, in Matthew 6, um, in the message in verse 33, it says, give your entire attention to what God is doing right now. And don't get worked up about what may or may not happen tomorrow. 
God will help you deal with whatever hard things come up when the time comes. And you know, that's uh, definitely directed to our year 12s, but to all of our students experiencing disappointment or sadness or isolation, that I just want that to speak into your heart right now. Yeah, for sure. So good. So good. Sorry, Jess, I cut you off. Yeah, go for it. Great for our students, and especially our year 12s. You know, even chatting to parents this week, you know, our heart breaks for year 12s. A lot of them, you know, they've been told everything is going to be online. They're missing their friends. A lot of graduations and celebrations are cancelled. And so I would just say, you know, God knows, He's aware, He cares, yeah. and He's near as well. So why don't we pray? And this is for all students as well. Like if, you know, you're facing this stuff, we love you. So Lord, we just thank you, God, that you are in control. And God, even though we have many questions and maybe not all the answers right now, Lord, I thank you that we, we know, God, that you are a God, Lord, that works in miraculous ways. And so, God, we lift up every single student in our youth ministry, Lord, especially our Victorian students and our VC students and yeah. your 12s, God. And I just pray right now, you'd remind every student that you're near, that you're not distant, that you're not far. And Lord, I thank you, your word says that we can cast all our anxieties, all the things that are worrying us, all the things that are keeping us up at night to you and on you. And God, I just pray, God, that we wouldn't feel like we are isolated, but God, we will do what we can to position ourselves in community. And God, I thank you that you're working in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we love you, Victoria, Melbourne. Our hearts are with you guys. Totally. And right around the globe, whoever is in yeah. full on lockdown. So if you are from Melbourne, why don't you throw us a blue heart in the chats yeah. so we know where you are right now. Young adults, high school students, leaders, let us know you're there. All and right? let's just keep praying yeah. that uh, we just see a breakthrough for this pandemic yeah. and that, um, yeah, that God has his perfect way. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, we come now. Hope you got your Bibles, your notepads. You are going to love Bible. Sam Lopez. He's pro pro approached. He preached two weeks ago in our weekend services. Mm -hmm. This guy's phenomenal. He's a young man, him and his wife, Courtney. Very cool couple, based in LA. They lead our campus in LA. Yeah. Very good friends. He actually started here, Hillsong College. He actually served with our Marylands campus there. And uh, he's really cool, isn't he? He's, he's a great lovely. communicator. Amazing. Great teacher of the word. You're gonna love what he has to say. So let's welcome Sam Lopez as he comes to bring the word tonight. Hello, Hillsong youth. Uh, it's good to be here. It's good to be here with you guys. Uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Sam Lopez, and uh, my wife and I are the campus pastors out here in Los Angeles. Um, but listen, I, I want to share something very uh, quickly and uh, something that's, that's helped me so much uh, in my own personal walk with God. And I hope that it blesses you. I hope it encourages you uh, wherever you are, from wherever you're watching. Uh, but I just want to share um, from John chapter 14. We're going to read verse 25. And today we're actually going to talk about the Holy Spirit. I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. Because I don't know about you, but I grew up in church. And things I heard about the Holy Spirit were a little strange, a tiny little bit. And I just want to kind of help maybe bring a bit of clarity about it because I know that that's what I definitely needed and I know it's helped me a lot and I hope it helps you too. So John chapter 14 and we're gonna look at verse 25 and this is Jesus speaking to his disciples. This is what he says. He goes, these things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you. But the helper, okay, we're gonna go back to that. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Now as the world gives, do I give to you. Uh, let not your hearts be troubled and neither let them be afraid. My wife and I were reading this book uh, a while ago called Just Mercy. And it's one of, honestly, just such an incredible, powerful book. And it's autobiographical, written by a guy named Brian Stevenson. Brian Stevenson is a hero in our household, okay? The guy is like, he's just OG status. And, um, and basically, Brian Stevenson is a lawyer. And in, early in his career, he writes about how he went to Montgomery, Alabama. It's in the south of the United States. 
the, the deep south, and uh, it is where Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King uh, was there. Rosa Parks was in Montgomery, Alabama. It is a it is a melting pot of the birth of the civil rights movement for the United States. And Brian Stevenson goes and he becomes a lawyer and begins to represent people that are on death row. These are people that are waiting to be executed by the state because of crimes they've committed. All that to say is that during this whole process, Brian meets a man named Walter McMillan. Walter McMillan has been charged for murder. He is now waiting for his death, awaiting his death. However, this story gets weird because Walter was uh, innocent. He was nowhere near the scene of the crime. There was only one person, uh, one person that said, oh, it was Walter. And therefore they moved on this one person's witness. However, on the same day, at the same time, Walter McMillan was at a family barbecue with over 30 family members that can all bear witness and attest to the fact that he was at the family barbecue and was nowhere near the murder. He was nowhere near the crime scene. There was no evidence of Walter McMillan there. There was no fingerprints of Walter McMillan at the crime site. There was nothing but one man's word. And because of that, Walter McMillan is on death row. Uh, I'm sure it's no surprise that Walter McMillan is African-American and the majority of law enforcement, well, they weren't. Brian Stevenson fought uh, as this man's lawyer. They fought and they fought and they faced opposition, they faced death threats, they faced all kinds of hardships. And after years and years of fight, and moving from court to court to court to court, they finally were able to prove Walter McMillan's innocence. And it's a powerful story of resilience. It's a powerful story of hope uh, under crazy circumstances. But the reason why I tell you the story is because very simply, one of the things that I've learned about the Holy Spirit is that the Holy Spirit is more like Brian Stevenson than he is of how I grew up learning about him. See, I, I grew up under the impression that like the Holy Spirit, and you might be different, you know, because we go to an awesome church. And if you're in our youth ministry, you're already doing great, man. But uh, for me, I, I grew up in an environment that was like just something else. It was great, but it's just something else. That's the nice way, you know. But basically, I just remember there was such this like crazy move of like the presence of God, which was so awesome. But, but what started to happen is that I'd hear people be like, man, I can really sense the presence of God. And I'd be under the AC vent and I'd feel the goosebumps on my arms and I'd be like, ooh, I can feel him too. Yes, Lord. Mm. And, and, you know, it's like the bridge of like, what a beautiful name, you know? And it's like, uh, yes, I love that. You got no rival, you know? And it's, um, it was feeling awesome. But then what would happen is that the following week I'd have to sit somewhere else and I wasn't under the AC vent. And so someone would be like, man, you can really feel the presence of God in here. And I'd look at everybody else and I'd be like, I don't, I don't feel anything. And what started to happen is that as a teenager, I started to kind of seek God based on how I felt. Kind of wear, follow the AC vent, you know, like follow the goosebumps, wherever the goosebumps lead you, because that's God. God is wherever the goosebumps are. And, and, and it made my walk with God so unpredictable. It made my walk with God with some very amazing highs, but some dark lows. Because that's when I started to say things like, I just don't feel God anymore. I don't know. I just, I, used, I only feel him at summer camp, you know, when it's like, when I feel the sweat running down my back, you know, and it's like, and it feels kind of gross, but it's also like the presence, you know, and under this like, under quarantine, like, I don't really feel it anymore, you know? And it, it's normal. So I think it's a real thing for us that all of us kind of find ourselves in this really weird place that we understand the Holy Spirit is this like, he's here, he's not here, he's moving, let him move. You know, it's like, we don't, it, it's, and it's, and there's a lot of things to that that are true. But I think when we understand, like I said earlier, what the Holy Spirit does, I think it allows us to, gives, gives us insight into who he is. And what I love about this story about Brian Stevenson is once again, the Holy Spirit is a lot more 
like that. You know, the Bible here, when we're talking about this passage of Jesus saying the Holy Spirit is our helper, the Holy Spirit, it's this Greek word that means paraclete, paraclete, someone that stands side by side with you and argues for you, someone that stands by your side and fights for you. Why is that important? Why do we need a lawyer? Why do we need somebody to argue uh, and fight for us? You know, there's a secret in this, and that's the... In, 1 John chapter 3, it says, uh, whenever our hearts condemn us, not if, but he says that whenever, it's going to happen, whenever our hearts condemn us, he says uh, that God is greater than that. That God is so much greater than that, for he knows all things. It's, uh, I think it's part of being human and following God that it is no secret that if you've walked with God long enough, the biggest opposition and the biggest hindrance to my walk with God has been me. Me, I'm my biggest hindrance. Not my mistakes, because there's grace for my mistakes. But the biggest hindrance has been what I tell myself, how much I condemn myself, how hard I can be on myself. I don't know if it's just me, if you're like that, but man, I am so hard on myself sometimes. I just go, man, Sam, I, you're, you're still struggling with this now? Sam, you're still thinking like this now? But you're a pastor now. I thought, I surely I thought by the time you become a pastor, it's like there's just certain things that you just, you don't deal with anymore. And, and after a while, it's like the more you keep going, the more you're like, I should have overcome this by now. I shouldn't be here anymore. I'm still struggling with this. I'm still talking like this. I'm still laughing like this. I'm still a part of this relationship. I'm still with these people, even though I know God said I probably shouldn't. I know. And, and what happens? You condemn and you you condemn and you condemn and you talk down and you talk down and you talk down and it's crazy the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 it says this amazing thing about the Holy Spirit and this is what I want to leave you with it says that the Holy Spirit of God says that the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God now think about this in a courtroom sense you are on the, you, you, you are uh, the defendant, right? You're being accused. And, and, and oftentimes, devil don't have to accuse you. You just accuse yourself already, right? And so you're sitting here and they go, Sam Lopez, you are uh, convicted of certain crimes and sins. You are convicted of, uh, of grumbling against God about complaining the things that you used to pray for. Uh, you are accused of just being very ungrateful uh, you're accused of rolling your eyes at your wife when she's not looking at you, when she tells you to throw out the trash. It doesn't happen. I promise you. I promise you. I'd never do that. But you are accused of these things. You're accused of pride. You're accused of your arrogance. You're, pu or you're accused. You told God that you would never do this again, and here you are doing it all over again. How do you plead? Now, in Walter McMillan's case, this man is innocent. But in my case, you know what I have to go? I'd have to go. I'm, 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 I'm. Um, I'm guilty. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm guilty. Okay. I'm so, so guilty. But the Bible says that the Holy Spirit bears witness. I, you know, my wife and I, we love like murder documentaries. And one of the things that we've learned is that in a murder documentary, an incredible witness will destroy the best of cases. Like if you've got a great witness, the witness will either destroy the case or will be absolutely pivotal to the prosecution. Why is that? So people go into witness protection programs because what they've seen with their eyes is so important. It, it, it's so important to the case. It could set someone free or it could set someone to jail for the rest of their life. Now, what is happening here? The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, that the moment you and I condemn ourselves going like, Sam, are you guilty? And I go, yes, I'm so guilty. I said, I would never do it again, but here I am doing it all over again. And I, I'm not, a, I, I, feel like, I, I feel like I don't love God and I know I do, but I still do this and I can't stop and I won't stop and I can't stop and I won't stop and I can't, and, I, and we go, Jesus, I, I just need your help. I don't know what to do anymore. I've tried this, I've tried that, and I just can't seem to change and I'm so so frustrated and I just oh I'm so angry at myself and it says that the Holy Spirit is the key witness and he stands up as your 
advocate, as your lawyer. And he says, objection, your honor. Objection. And they go, well, he already pleaded guilty. He pleaded guilty already. He goes, no, 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 no. I've got something I got to say. This man is absolutely guilty. Sam is absolutely guilty. He is. However, he goes, it is unlawful for this man to pay these crimes. Why? Because someone has already paid the price. See, oftentimes we feel like the Holy Spirit or even God himself, like we're coming to him and we're just pleading for mercy, right? Like, please, Lord, like I promise I will never do it again. Uh, I promise, like, can I just get one more chance? Just one more chance. I know your grace is sufficient, but like, please, just one more, just one more. And the Holy Spirit does not advocate for us. Jesus, our advocate, does not advocate for us based on mercy. He advocates for us based on justice, based on the law. And you know what he says? He goes, judge, it is absolutely against the law for this man to pay twice for the state to receive two payments for this man's sin and wrongdoing. And because it's already been paid, he shouldn't have to pay it again. The Holy Spirit argues for us, but he argues with us. What does he argue with you? He goes, don't you forget who you are. You are a child of God. You have been renewed. You are made righteous. You have been set apart. You have been holy. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. You have been set apart. Don't forget who you are. Why? Because you want to condemn yourself. And he goes, stop that. And he goes, I told you. He goes, let me remind you who you are. Let me tell you who you are. He bears witness. He goes, I am the key witness. I remember I was there when you put your faith in Jesus. I remember that it was nothing that you did that deserved you salvation, but it was in faith and faith alone in the finished work of Jesus that granted you this free gift of God. I was there. And if there's nothing you could do to earn it, there's nothing you can do to get rid of it. Why? Because your faith has been in Jesus. And then he advocates against the enemy me. When the enemy tries to condemn you, he goes, no, 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 I was there. I was there and there's been payment already made for his sin, for her sin, for her wrongdoing, for his wrongdoing. And he goes, no, 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 no. And I advocate that there would be all charges drop, a full acquittal in the Holy Spirit. You have a lawyer and an advocate that stands by your side. So don't you forget in this season, no matter what you're going through, if you're a little hard on yourself, don't forget you you have a Holy Spirit that advocates for you, that fights for you, that stands with you. And, and if the enemy wants to come in and remind you, you just go, Holy Spirit, you better remind him or I'm about to tell him who I am. I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I have been renewed. I've been set free. I am justified. And who the Son has set free is free indeed. And listen, I, I don't know how you're doing tonight. If this is resonating with you, I hope it is. It's what set me free and what's encouraged me in these moments. And, you know, it's crazy because we would go, then who deserves this? What do we have to do to get this lawyer? And the truth is, is that for anybody watching and you've never made a decision to follow Jesus, you know, it's this amazing decision that is God's gift to us that God loved the world that he gave Jesus. We've often, I think, understood sin to be the bad things that we've done, you know, things that we're not proud of. We might've stole something once or lied here, or manipulated here, but the Bible is clear to say that sin is so much deeper than that. Jesus says that good trees produce good fruit and bad trees produce bad fruit. Basically, he's saying the outside things that we do that we might not be proud of, that's just the fruit of a bad root. And oftentimes we go, I'm going to be a better person. And, but that's honestly, that's just trying to glue apples to an orange tree. And you can fake it for a while, but give it time. You're going to produce your real fruit. It's only by our faith in Jesus alone. You don't have to do anything to earn it. Uh, none of us deserve it. But that's why this is so incredible. It's not by what we've done, but it's our faith in him. And so I want to lead you in a prayer in this moment, if that's you. And so wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes and pray with me. Dear Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me and rising again. I put my trust in you today and I trust that in good time, I will bear good fruit. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Again, for everybody else, I hope this blessed you. Hope this encouraged you. You've got an advocate. I've got an advocate. And uh, man, love you guys. If you're ever in LA, come by, come say hi. We love you so much. Have a good night. Wow, that was amazing. Come on, let's really light up the chat and really thank Sam Lopez for, wow. I feel like when Sam speaks, he kind of just relaxes us and just really speaks into each and every young person's soul. And man, that word really was impacting, I know for myself even, even when he was talking about that bit about, you know, you're in the witness stand and you're being held accountable for your complaining. I think we can all, uh, account for that, that we've all complained at some point, but how good that the Holy Spirit fights for us. So beautiful. So thanks again, Sam. Hey, he prayed a prayer at the end there and it was a prayer of um, forgiveness. It's a prayer of asking Jesus into your life. If you said that prayer, maybe you mumbled it under your breath. I don't know, maybe you said it in your heart. Maybe you said it out loud. But if you meant that prayer from the bottom of your heart, there's going to be a, a link. It's going to pop up in the chat or maybe on the screen there, a website, go to that website and uh, we'll help you in getting started on following this journey of following Jesus. Man, that was such an amazing message and a big congratulations again to those of you that prayed that prayer, okay? So that was cool. Did you guys love that? Yeah, so good. We're gonna have Sam back for show. So thanks Sam, all the way from here in Sydney, across the pond to LA, we love you. Hopefully we'll get there sooner than later, but hey, uh, this weekend, we've got church on, Pastor Brian. And listen, you don't want to miss it. There's so many options for church. So gather around, you know, get, get with your family, get your unsafe parents. Maybe they want to tune in on it. Turn it on the TV and turn it up loud. So they go, hey, what are you watching? You're watching church. So join in this Sunday. This weekend's going to be amazing. And uh, look, I know we're not meant to do this on YouTube, but I'm gonna drop it anyway. Young and Free album is coming out in two weeks. All right, August 28th, mark it in your diaries. It's gonna be an amazing celebration. We're gonna celebrate here, <laughs> Youth Online, uh, Young and Free album launch. You don't wanna miss it, August 28th, okay? It's gonna be absolutely amazing. But hey, straight after this, don't go anywhere. The after party is gonna be kicking on. It's the after party, all right? But listen, let me pray for you. Uh, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. I am being serious. By the end of September, if we get to 20,000 subscribers, I don't think we can, but if we think we can, I have said, and you can record this, take this to the bank, I will happily dye my hair blonde if by September, the end of September, we get to 20,000. So hit subscribe if you're joining in. We'd love to have you a part of the family. Let me pray for you. Then let's kick out with a song of indescribable, indescribable. Lord, thank you for our youth ministry here, right around the globe. Lord, for every young person watching in, thank you that you'll go before them, you'll bless them. You cause your face to shine upon them. We thank you for tonight. What an incredible night it was. Holy Spirit, we invite you into our every day. May we be aware of your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whenever you're ready. <laughs>